Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebecca, and in this silhouette print and cut tutorial, I'll be sharing some tips for getting better printed results with print and cut images in Silhouette Studio. First, I want to talk a little bit about color modes. There are two main color modes when you're working in any kind of design software, and those are RGB and CMYK. RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and it's a color mode that uses red, green, and blue light to create color. Most digital devices use the RGB color mode, including your smartphone and computer monitor. And this color mode is also what people who work in web design and development use when they're creating websites, apps, and similar projects. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, and the key color is black. This mode is based on color pigments and how they're absorbed and reflected on printed surfaces like paper and fabric. If you have a color printer at home, then it has cartridges for each of the separate CMYK pigment colors, whether it's an inkjet or a laser printer. As I mentioned earlier, the RGB color system is based on light. It's called an additive system because the different colors are created by adding and mixing different variations of red, green, and blue light together. The more light that you add, the lighter the color will be. So you can see that in the image on the left, in the center area where all of the colors overlap at their highest intensity, the color that you get is white. Because RGB colors are communicated via light, the RGB color mode includes many super bright and vivid colors that you can't get with the CMYK color mode. So the RGB spectrum offers a larger range of colors overall. The CMYK color system is what is called a subtractive system and is based on pigments and how they're either absorbed into or reflected off of a surface. You can see on the image on the right, in the center area where all of the colors overlap at their highest intensity, the color that you get is black. This is because black absorbs all color, so you can throw the max amounts of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in there, and black will absorb them all. Different colors in the system are created by subtracting and mixing different variations of the four pigments. So the more pigment you subtract, the lighter the color or tone will be. In other words, lighter colors absorb less and reflect more. And when you subtract the max amount of all of the four pigments, you end up with the color white, which reflects all color and doesn't absorb any. Because printed surfaces don't emit light, colors in the CMYK system don't tend to be as bright or vivid as colors on the screen, and the overall color range is more limited than the RGB system is. Here I have the RGB and CMYK values for both black and white to hopefully better illustrate the additive versus subtractive systems. The RGB values for black are 0, 0, and 0 because the RGB system is light-based and the color black is the absence of all light, whereas the RGB values for white are the max value of 255 for each of the colors because white is the lightest and brightest color. In the CMYK system, which is subtractive, the values for black are the max of each of the four pigments because black absorbs all color and is the darkest color. And the CMYKs for white are all zero because white reflects all color as opposed to absorbing it. Okay, let's hop over to Silhouette Studio so I can show you how all of this complex color stuff translates to what we're doing with print and cut. I'll go over to the far right menu and open the fill panel and you'll see the default palette of colors that Silhouette Studio offers. The color mode used in Silhouette Studio is RGB, and unlike other graphic software like Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, we aren't able to manually change the color mode from RGB to CMYK for print projects. So in the default color palette here, I can already tell that many of these colors won't translate well when printed because they're just too bright. Printed surfaces like cardstock and paper don't emit light like our computer monitors do, and colors like the super bright and light blues, greens, and purples in this palette just aren't possible with the pigment-based CMY color system, which is what your printer uses. Some professional printers have special inks to create super bright colors like neon yellow, green, and pink, or metallics like gold and silver, but your home printer doesn't have the ability to make these brighter colors. When we open the advanced option area in the fill panel, we have a few options for using our own custom colors, but CMYK values aren't an option. I've always been confused about why they aren't included since I would assume that the fill panel would be used most of the time for projects that will be printed, but it is what it is and we can still work with it. The custom options that are included are HSL values and this stands for hue, saturation, and light. 
Honestly, I don't think I've ever used these values and I don't know of any designer who does, but it's nice that there's that option. The next option is RGB values, and these will be the red, green, and blue values for our color. The final option is the color hex code. A color's hex code is the pound sign followed by six hex values, which are actually three hex value pairs. These hex value pairs translate to the color's RGB values, and hex codes are typically used by web designers and web developers when creating websites or any screen-based projects. But you can totally use a hex code for a custom color here if that's what you have. I'll talk more about how to find custom color values and set up your own color palettes in the next video. When I click anywhere in the custom color picker area, all of the values for the color are automatically set, so you don't even necessarily need the custom color values to use custom colors. Since we don't have the ability to switch color modes in Silhouette Studio, the printer dialog area can sometimes be helpful. In other graphic software like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, the printer dialog window that pops up when you click to print will allow you to actually set or change color profiles and color management options. So typically you can set color profiles to things like sRGB, Adobe RGB, or SWOP, which is a CMYK profile. And you can also change the color management options, so either the color profile that's set in the software that you're printing from will manage the color output, or the printer that you're printing to will manage it. Setting color profiles and color management options will specify how the colors in your file will be converted when they're sent to your printer. So even if you're printing a file that's set to RGB color mode, the colors will be translated to CMYK when they're sent to your printer, since CMYK pigments are what your printer uses. Having said all of this, Silhouette Studio doesn't offer color management options when you print, so we have less flexibility than we would with other types of software. But you can still make some adjustments that can definitely make a difference in your print results. Every printer and model has different print dialog options. So what I have in my print options here and what you see when you open your own print dialog window will be different. For example, I'll open the print window here and click on preferences for the Canon iX6500 series, which is my inkjet printer. The default tab has options for paper size, paper type, paper source, and print quality, and these preferences for your printer might be located in another tab or area. My two print quality options are standard and high, and I have this set to high right now. I've found that this setting can make a big difference in my print results. Setting the quality to high gives me richer and more vivid results. In the second tab here, I can also change the print quality settings or even set a custom print quality, which I've actually never done, but it's good to know it's possible. I can also set color intensity, and if I select manual here and click the set button, I get lots of additional options for making adjustments. Unless you're noticing that your printer is consistently printing colors with, say, like a green tint or something, or colors aren't as intense or rich as you'd like on a regular basis, I would recommend making adjustments to individual images in your software instead of changing settings within your printer, because doing something like shifting one of the color sliders at the top and leaving your printer set that way could actually cause images that would otherwise print fine to have color casts. But settings like contrast and intensity are definitely an option if you're noticing that your images are too light or washed out in all of your print results. So like I said earlier, your printer options will probably be different than mine are unless you have the same printer. You may have more options for color correcting or you may have less. For example, I have much fewer options in the dialog for my color laser printer than I have here for my inkjet printer. One of the best ways to see how colors will print is to make a test print. I made a color chart here with all of the colors in the default fill panel color palette, and I'll include a link in the area below the video where you can download it for free so you can use it for your own test prints. I'm going to print this color chart onto some different types of cardstock using both my inkjet and laser printers, and I'll see you over on the craft mat to show you my results. Okay, I have my color charts all printed out, and first I'll show you the results that I got with my color laser printer. I printed one chart on Hammer Mill Color Copy cardstock and a second chart on Nina Solar White 80 Pound cardstock because these are the two white cardstocks that I use most often. It's a good idea to print a sample chart onto each type of cardstock that you regularly use for printing, if possible, because color undertones in the cardstock itself can also cause subtle differences in the color results. 
I love my color laser printer and use it a lot in my work as a designer, but laser printers aren't known for their superior color printing abilities, especially when it comes to things like photos. I'm typically not printing photos though, and I'm really happy with this printer because it has pretty good color results and it's a real workhorse. I want to mention that the colors that you're seeing aren't 100% accurate since it's tough to show completely accurate true-to-life color results via video, but you can see in these printed results that the colors aren't nearly as bright as they were on the screen, which is to be expected since they were printed with CMYK inks and there's no light source to brighten them up. This is the reality of printing bright colors. One especially noticeable example of this is the green color down at the bottom of this column. On the screen, it was a super bright shade of green, but it's very muted and much darker when printed out. Also, the colors in the top row here, the greens, blues, and purples especially, have shifted a lot from the colors on the screen. The green and aqua rows here definitely look a lot different. Not bad, just not nearly as bright as they were. If you print onto a piece of paper or cardstock that has some color, like this chart that I printed onto the My Favorite Things Primitive Cream cardstock, the color of the cardstock will add a tint to the color results. In this case, it's a warm, slightly yellow tint. Next, I have the results with my Canon inkjet printer set at the standard print quality setting, and you'll probably notice immediately that these color results are lighter and a little bit brighter than my results with the color laser printer. I'll bring some of my color laser results back in here, and you can see that some things don't change. For example, the row of greens that I talked about when I was going over the color laser results, that row is still much darker than it was on screen, even with the brighter inkjet results. The color results with the inkjet are noticeably lighter though, and in certain areas like the top colors in the third and fourth rows from the right here, the shades of purpley blue are differentiated much more in the inkjet results than they were in the laser results. But the opposite can also be true. Let's have a look at this column of yellow greens here. In the inkjet results, all of the colors in the column look practically the same, but in that same row in the color laser results, you can definitely see the difference between the colors in the column. So differences in print color results between printers can be more subtle, and they can also be very noticeable depending on the color. Finally, I printed the charts on both the Hammer Mill and Nina card stocks using the high quality print setting on my inkjet printer. When I put them side by side here with the high quality on the left and standard quality on the right, there is definitely a difference. I don't know how well you can see it through the screen, but in person the results with the high quality setting are noticeably richer and more vivid. So if I'm getting printed results that I think are a little too light or slightly washed out, I'll switch to the high quality setting to get better results. One last thing I want to show you is how to adjust the colors in your image in Silhouette Studio. I covered this more in depth in an earlier video in this series, and the link to that should be popping up right about now if you want to check it out. But in this video, I just want to quickly show you how I would normally adjust an image in Silhouette Studio if it was printing out too light, not saturated enough, or with a color cast. And these are some of the most common issues that you'll run into when printing. I've got this reindeer cupcake graphic open here in Silhouette Studio, and it looks great on the screen, but it's a little bit faded looking when I print it out on my inkjet printer. First, I'll press Controller Command plus C to copy him, then Controller Command plus V to paste the copy. For the copy, I want to bump up the contrast and saturation a bit, so I'll make sure he's selected, then go over to the far right menu and open the Image Effects panel. The tools in this panel that will be most helpful for you for common color issues are the brightness, contrast, and saturation sliders, which are under the little icon that looks like a sunshine, and also the tint sliders, which are under the icon that looks like a little can of spray paint. For this image, I'll work with the brightness, contrast, and saturation sliders. I'll bump the brightness down a little bit, and I'll bump the contrast and saturation up, then click apply to save the changes. Now I know that the results, especially the super bright and saturated red, aren't going to be what I get when I print, but the colors should still be brighter and more saturated than in the original image. I'll make another copy of the original image, and in this copy I'll work with the tint sliders. I want to warm my image up a little bit since I felt that it was a touch too cool, so I'll slide the blue slider to the left to warm it up with some yellow. If you watched my earlier video on adjusting image color, then you'll remember that the color opposite blue on the blue slider is yellow. Subtle adjustments are usually best here, so we don't want to make him too yellow, we just want to add a bit more warmth to the image. When I'm happy with how my little reindeer looks, I'll click apply to apply the changes. 
I'll make one more copy of the original image and I'll go back over to the brightness, contrast, and saturation slider tab to adjust this image. Sometimes you may want your image to have a less saturated look, maybe because it's printing out too saturated or because you want the image to be less saturated to match the project that you're working on. In this case, just bump the saturation slider down until you like how things are looking. Click apply to apply the changes. Now I'm going to print these guys out on my inkjet printer using the high print quality setting. I'll see you back over on the craft mat with the results. Okay, I'm back with the print results. And first I wanna point out that the boxes that appear around images when you use the image effects panel in Silhouette Studio don't print out. I mentioned this in an earlier video, but I wanted to mention it again here so you can see that there are no boxes around the printed images. I'm not sure how well you can see this on screen, but I hope you can see the differences in these printed results. The subtle adjustments that I made in Silhouette Studio using the image effects panel changed how the adjusted image is printed. So in all of the images, you can see that the colors aren't quite as bright as they were on the screen, but you can also see that making adjustments to the brightness, contrast, and saturation made for better printed results in the image on the right. The difference is subtle, but it's definitely there, and I like this result much better than the original. In the bottom left image, I added a little bit of yellow tint to warm it up, and I think that it's a touch too yellow, but I still like the result. The colors definitely look richer than in the original image. Finally, the image on the lower right is the one that I desaturated, and it does look desaturated when it's printed too. The muted colors and tones of this image would work well if you're making a scrapbook page or handmade card with sort of a mid-century retro vibe. I hope that this video has been helpful in giving you some pointers about how you can make changes and adjustments both in printer and in Silhouette Studio software so you can get better results when printing. I also hope that it's helped give you a better understanding of why what you see on the screen and what comes out of your printer can sometimes be very different. If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you would give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.